Welcome, welcome, welcome to Amber Skies. My name's Blades, and it's Friday, it's two o'clock, and we've got a little bit left to do with shaders. Now, I hinted at something yesterday that there's an alternative, and I think we'll start there. What alternatives could there be? Mmm... Alternatives, you may say. Ah, how can you have alternatives to OpenGL? Well, that's a good question. You can. You can have Vulkan. That's one way of doing things. I, th I think I did a little bit on Vulkan. Not much. It looked interesting. To say the... Well, just to say the least, it looked interesting. Now... Let's go to this help thingy. Um, ooh, let's see, don't really want search. Index. Index might help. Um, I'm not sure though. Mm, we're going to numbers or not. Um, Q, T, here we go, got it straight off, whoops, not that one, that one, <laughs> QT3D provides functionality for near real-time simulation systems with support for 2D and 3D rendering in both QT C++ and QT Quick, QML, applications, um, QML is the QT markup language. Um, not really sure how to describe it. JavaScript? Java? Hmm. So there's your alternative. It has core classes, input classes, logic classes, and render classes. Does not really um, open itself up for alteration, as far as I can tell. I've tried. Um, you can have a look at my Qt 3D stuff on the website. Here we go. Let's get ourselves a website. Just move that up there a bit. There we go. Move that down a bit, can't we? Maybe not. Hmm. Interesting. All right. Oh, right, yeah, it's got a thing up, that's why. Ha da ba dum 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 da dum. So at github.com, Amber Skies, uh, we have Qt3D, and this goes through some of it. 
Um, and what you can do. I think... Uh, QT, this one's pretty interesting, the development one. I do the basic framework, uh, Demon's Run and the Big Snake, as games uh, using QT3D. Um, and I can't remember what I did for the map. And that's my problem with this. It's a key fung material. Did I just load one? Yeah, I did. I just loaded up a, a, a mesh. That's fine. Yeah, right. Bit of a waste of time that. But that's how you load a mesh. Uh, you get yourself a mesh, you get yourself a material, um, you make it into an entity, and then you add the components, the mesh, the material, and position. Very, very simple QT example there, QT 3D example. Mm, not really happy with that kind of thing. So the actual material is a fong material. Now a fong shader is what I usually use um, anyway and I can write a fong shader so I'm not really too bothered about using QT3D extras to make a fong material and then add it as a component. Could do. We could go down that path. It'd be a lot easier as you can tell. But there is this entity system, this ECS, Entity Component System. The problem with the ECS in QT3D, as far as I can tell, is you don't get to see the system. You don't know what the system's doing. You've got, you don't seem to have much control over it. Uh, or I haven't found a way to control it very well. Um, how do you draw? Um, source. Rendering. Okay. There's a component that I, I created myself. Custom aspects and things. Uh, start screen graphics. Well, everything's controlled through here. And if I'm right, it's on a timer. No, I didn't even don't even think I bother with that. Initialize 3D. Camera, light, FPS component. Um, that's roughly about it, isn't it? Getters, uh, light, yeah, setters. <coughs> Mouse events, keyboard events are all here. This is normal stuff, this. This isn't anything to do with QT3D. Um, that's an OpenGL version of stuff. Mm, nothing really much in there for rendering. So we've got... I made a barrier down each side of the map, map and player, and that's it. That's all there is. So it's map, map, create south boundary. Yeah, that's interesting. I put a create in there. Hmm, interesting. Uh, goal, yeah, okay. Get goals, yeah. Notes for textures, yeah. We're starting to have a bit of a um, graphics test for texturing and stuff, but well, yeah. So that's QT3D. There are examples, uh, and they all work. 
that's the main thing. They all work. So that's QT3D. There's also, oh gosh, I wish I'd stop doing that in your hand. Ow. Uh, QML. Advanced Tutorial, QML Applications. Here we go. QML is a declarative language that allows user interfaces to be described in terms of their visual components and how they interact and relate with one another. Um, it's a user interface specification and a programming language. It allows developers and designers alike to create highly performant, fluidly animated and visually appealing applications. QML offers a highly readable JSON-like syntax, JSON-like, that's what I was looking for, uh, with support for imperative JavaScript, yeah. Expressions combined with dynamic property bindings. So, yeah, it's one of those. What would I use QML for? Probably um, web design. Because, yeah. It's got special effects, buttons, menus, and cut others. Uh, then it goes into uh, web content. Sensors, gestures, and touch interface. Obviously, they like mobile phones, mobile devices. Multimedia content, obviously, you put all of those together on what you think you got, yeah. Code samples and demos, advanced application development topics. All right, QML and C++ deploying. I wouldn't mind actually looking at that, because QML is actually is interesting. Or could be. And yes, you can use QML. Uh, for OpenGL and stuff. I don't know why. QML modules. <laughs> there are two different types of modules supported by QML. Identified modules. Oh, imports. Right, got you. It uses that import thingy. Yeah. Interesting stuff. So it's it's a language that Qt offers uh, alongside the C plus plus, and I do find that it's interested. Interesting, should I say? I mean, look at that. That is rather nice. So that's like new game score two nine one. Um, no idea how to play the game or anything, but yeah. Yeah, it shows you a whole game. And there's a 3D uh, QML one online. Um, so if you look up QML 3D um, or QT 3D game example or something like that and it comes up as a PDF file uh, you can it goes through all the instructions and uh, does like a, a, a tutorial a very good tutorial <coughs> but you can obviously see what that is designed for that's it's mobile phone stuff um, so this is how it looks QML. So rectangle ID screen, width and height, system palette, item, parent, width, anchors, top, bottom, blah, blah, image, background, fill, background, JPEG. Um, yeah, it's mm, okay. I have actually programmed in QML. It is one of those things that I know how to do, but not very well. So that's QT3D, QML, or OpenGL. Why do I choose OpenGL? Uh, one, I know it best. I know it better than the other two. 
uh, and I feel more comfortable having more control with C++ than I would with QML or Qt3d. Qt3d I really do like though. I must admit I love programming in Qt3d. It just saves you so much hassle until you try and do something that it's not designed to do and then it can cause problems because I don't think the ECS system it uses is quite what I, th what I thought it would be. Um, okay. Overview. The QT3D render frame graph. Does it come in here? Here we go. Uh, there, yeah, and it gives you all the examples. Um, and then it shows it in QML. So all the examples are given like in QML, which really annoys me. But, hey ho, uh, QT3D, it can pre present you with very nice, um, easy, and I mean easy uh, to put together scenes. So, I mean, this is all in QML. Uh, so it's got top different viewports and shows you how the viewports work. And uh, job managers, more code. Yeah, hmm, right, okay. And it uses the Open Asset Import Library, which is Asimp, which I've never shown you. Oh, my bad. Oops. Uh, well, okay, we might do some of that then. Uh, we could Asimp out. We can do our own Asimp. Mmm, gives me ideas. Instead of writing my normal um, graphics loader, we could use Asimp. We might try that. Hey, why not? Anyway, back to coding, what we're we doing today. Um, I was going to do another shader. Um, let's do a better vertex shader and this time I'm going to call it basic we've got the simplified which is does nothing uh, so under other files uh, add new uh, GLSL and um, we'll have a, a vertex shader choose um, this is going to be basic color yeah I'll spell it the American way, because I don't know why everything seems to do that. I'm just going to follow suit, really. Um, yeah, I'll put it wherever it wants to go. I don't really care where it's going. Yeah, that's okay. Finish. Oh, yeah, and it gives us all this stuff. Right, let's get rid of that. Yeah, fine. Right, let's do a basic color vertex shader and the vertex shader is all about positions as we found out from our simplified one here in fact if I copy that that's the basis for this shader there we go makes things easy doesn't it because the position I never change the location I always have it in the same place what we're going to add um, is color so let's add color. So layout and it's location. And this will be equal to one. May as well. It's um, data coming into the shader. Oops. In. Uh, we'll have. 
Well, we have to have a VEC4. Oh, yeah. And we'll just call it color. <coughs> Have I got any coffee left? I want to drink it before it goes cold this time. Um, the other thing I want to do is... What was it? I wanted to address something. I typed in the positions for a square. What have we got? Well, it's not a square. Why is my computer running slow? Interesting. My computer's running slow. <coughs> There's something going on. Maybe it's downloading something in the background. It usually does this on a Friday. And probably a Windows update or something stupid. Oh, it's coming back to normal now. No. It's still slow. But that is definitely an oblong and not a, a square. So I'd like to address that as well. And to do that, we're going to introduce a different type of uh, variable. So these are the variables that we are passing in that control the model. And what I want to do now is just give the model a position in 3D space. So it's got, I'm going to call it uniform because it only, it's only needed once for all of the data being passed through. So all of these positions and colors that get put through the shader, this only is added to the mix once. So uniform, thank you, we'll take you. Uh, we're going to have a matrix, so it's a map four. What's the matrix blade? Oh, I'm glad you asked. Hmm. Do you want to know what matrices, matrices are? It's up to you. I'm going to call it MVP. So there's a few things there that I've just put put into the mix, haven't I? Can we just get this so people can see it? Yep, that will do nicely. So, what have I just added there? Quite a bit. What I've just added is a matrix. And that's a 4, X, 4. And M, V, P. Which stands for model. Which I've forgotten how to spell completely off the top of my head. E L. Uh, view. And project. So the model um, is position data for 3D space. The view is, uh, how can you put it? Is what in front of the camera? Because you need a camera. Although we might not actually specify that we are going to be using one. We will be using one. Cam over. Um, projection. Is. How. That looks. On. The display. A 
and displays are 2D. I'll put output as well. So, what do you do? You take your position, you times it by the model matrix to put it into 3D space. You times it by view to then uh, put it uh, relative to where the camera is looking. And then you times it by projection so that it can convert it into the 2D display output. And that is three matrices. So these are all map fours. Now, a map four equals sixteen floats. Well, that's what I'm going to be using. Okay, four by four. So there's two ways of doing this. Now, in a computer, those 16 floats are held like this. So you'd have the first zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all the way up to, you guessed it, 15. So that was would be your 16 floats, it's just a line of them. In our heads, so that's a compute. That's the computer's view. So this is the computer's view. Well, storage. That's how the computer stores it. It's just a. a a line of memory. Uh, each one of these is uh, four bytes, 32 bits of memory. So it's four bytes each. So four times 16 is a few. It's quite big. And can get bigger, well, double. If you use doubles, which are 64 bit, instead of the floats, which are 32 bit. So it's 4 bytes, 4 times 8 is 32 bits. There you go, it's a 32 bit float. Um, we tend to look at uh, matrices a bit like this. Uh, X, comma, Y, comma, Z, comma, W. And that would be ditto, ditto, ditto. There you go, four by four. But there's a problem. Humans might look at it like that, where that is zero, zero, one, two, three, zero, one, two, three column, row. Alright, so, may as well do it properly. Right, column and row, 0, 1, 2, 3. Now, which way do the x, y, z, w's go? So there are two ways of rep. We get sorry. Uh, we can represent it two ways. We can. So humans. Make this 
awkward. There we go. So a human either reads across and down like that or down and across. And if you're Chinese or Asian, it might even go backwards. I don't know. I never asked them. Um, so you've got column major. So that would be called column major. The technical term. And row major. The technical term. And OpenGL uses column major. That's the boiled down. Th I'm not going to go through all the explanations of why. So, for us, all we care about is that OpenGL equals column major. Um, matrix and that's the final words I'm really going to say on matrices and I can go further into this if you want me to uh, if anybody who sees this video on YouTube um, wants more information about matrices I'll do a video on it it's something that some people might want to learn more about and how they work uh, to a lot of people, I just say, treat it as a little black box of, you know, magic numbers. That's the easiest way to do it, and just, just forget about it. Program it, program it once, stick it into a static library, and forget about it. Just get it right the first time, that's all I ask. So, this the understanding of it is a personal thing for me, it's just that I wanted to understand it. So I learnt more about it than most people probably would. Right. So we need three matrices. That's the first thing. And hold on a minute, we've got colour. What are we going to do with that? Well, I want to deal with colour not in the position shader. This this is a vertex shader, so it deals with position. The vertex is position. So vec4 position, that can stay the same, can't it? I could change that to a vec4. No, I'm gonna no, no, I'm gonna be good. I'm gonna be good this time, I'm gonna leave it at a vec3. I usually change it to a vec4. Uh because I'm just trying to think. No. Blender doesn't write things out as vec4s, does it? No. Oh yeah, I was having to add the fourth, wasn't I? So that's something to think about there. You could change that to a VEC4, but you've got to then bear in mind that if you're using OBJ files and you're loading them yourself, uh, you are going to have to add the fourth, the fourth number every time to the position or vertex whatever you're reading at the time and you've got to make sure everything matches up all right what else do i need in here well obviously we need to do is something with this color well but i don't want to deal with the color in here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to pass the color over to our fragment shader and so when when I come to, to read the fragment shader and I see a variable, as you can see, I've, I've already marked it as a U for uniform. I mean, I could actually put these as L for local. Um, no. General. No. I don't know what to say. No. Yeah. L for locations or layout. Don't know. You could do that. But I use U for uniform 
and if I pass a variable out of the vertex shader I put a V in front of it so out so when it's when it's received in the um, fragment shader I know where it's come from that's all that's all because your fragment shader can get more complicated than uh, this shader does usually unless you're like me there you go so all we're going to do is that so we're just going to send it on its way uh, out vec for v underscore color and that we're going to pick up in the fragment shader so all we have to do here is add a line v underscore color equals color now you're probably thinking well why don't you just out vec for color you can but later on this is going to change <laughs> most likely um, because you'll want to possibly do some calculations here in the vertex shader remember this only runs three times per triangle where your fragment shader can run thousands of times per triangle because it has to do every single little dot in it and if you've got a massive 4k screen and you've got a massive triangle on it that's a lot of dots to scream through and you've got to do it into the background, so yeah. And size everything and everything. So anyway, enough of that. That's it. Um, do we need anything else here? Nah. I think we'll leave it as that. I'll call the next one. Um, uh, add new. Here we go. Of a vertex, no fragment shader. Next, choose um, basic color. Uh, next, yep, that looks okay. There we go, and we'll put ours in. That's ours. And that can go into... Oh. There we go. Basic colour. Uh, fragment shader. Um, not really much going to happen here, is there? Because we've only really changed one thing, uh, and that's we've added color plus oh yeah, it's a map four, isn't it? And I've just said all about multiplying them together and all of that, and I haven't done it. <laughs> oh dear, I'm a muppet. So all we have to do here is u underscore my bad mvp and that's multiplied by vec4 position. That'll do fine. And that'll come out to a gl position. Yes, that will. So we're just multiplying it and that will do all of those magic numbers. Right, that's you finish. I thought I'd forgotten something there, but anyway. So we have now got uh, in vec4 and it's v because it's coming from the vertex shader and it's color. Very easy. Has to be exactly spelt the same way. So if you spell color with a u here, you must spell color with a u here. That's why when I wrote the word colour, I said I'm going to do it the American way. Just so that people don't worry about it. 
Now that's a VEC4, and that's a VEC4, that's a colour, and that's a colour, so yeah. I think we can simplify this now. To that. Yeah, you see, it's still simple. That's why I called it basic and I didn't call it colour, for instance. <laughs> so that's your simplified, which does nothing really. And then we've got the basic. Now, the basic does require more information. Luckily, we've got most of it already. That's your shaders done. Um, okay. Okay, where are we now? OGL. Right, I don't want OGL for this. Right, so the first things that we are going to have to do is change over our shaders. Not the display, the shaders. So from simplified, we're now going to go to basic colour. Oh, what am I doing now? Is that basic colour, comma? Well, no. Yeah, go on. no, don't put it in. So all I need to do now is change it over to basic colour. Copy. Uh, oh right, we have put it in there, have we? I hadn't realised that. My bad. I've actually put it in OGL. So I'll change it here, paste, to basic colour. Now, the poor little thing doesn't know what a basic colour shader is, so we better tell it. And that will be... dot dot slash, and... Make sure I get the capitals right. colour, there we go. So this is our second shader, but you can see now why I went to the effort of doing these. It's going to make things a lot simpler later. Uh, so that will be a 1. So let's have a look now. Okay, so that's going to be zero, that's going to be one. Yeah, that'll work. Shader. Name. Gets passed in. Basic colour is one, so shader one is that one. That's shader zero. So that automatically picks up on the name. Don't have to alter anything else. There's nothing to alter in the program here. As you can see, all we do is add to it. The only thing we have to alter is we have to choose which um, shader name we want. So there we go. That's that done. As you can tell, you, you, you would have a collection of shaders. In fact, over the years, I've collected one that works properly and does the best ever. So that's all we need to do here. But there's a problem now. Hmm. We 
only have position and we need more I think we're going to need more so what are we going to need let's think about it well we know really what we're going to need because we've just added things and what have we added we've added color MVP and color so just color and MVP that's all we've added so let's do that this one is going to be hmm I don't know uh, have I got an int for this yeah I have uh, comma m underscore color and now we need right so we're adding something new q timer did we ever use it not in here we didn't no we put it into the other one didn't we just make sure yeah we're fine Yeah, all right. So in the H, uh, we'll need to include the maths library. Uh, four by four, please. There we go. It's written for us. If you remember, I always had to start my 3D um, introductions and things saying the first thing I want to do is a maths library well we've already got it and look at what you can do oh wow this is amazing look at all of this stuff that you can do you can map it onto other things you've got perspective which we're going to be using very very soon um, translations viewports different operators all done for us this is a lot a lot bigger than what I usually write a lot more than I usually have for my matrices um, related non non members we've got fuzzy compares um, and we can also pipe it in and out of things data stream it um, class in general is treated as a row major matrix in that it constructs an operator so it's going in rows function takes data in row major format as is familiar in C style usage internally the data is stored in column major format so as to be optimal for passing to OpenGL functions which expect col column major data and that's why I went through that with you uh, first so you would un at least have some understanding of what's going on so in general we treat it as row major but internally the data is actually stored column major it's not really going to bother us too much um, because it's been like that bits for the human that bits for the computer and there's a big reason why the computers are column major and I can't go into it because it would take too long uh, something to do with something that happened in the 60s before I was born um, probably but anyway Q matrix 4x4 has tons and tons and tons of documentation if you want to have a look at it okay I personally don't because I only need a bit of it so I'm not going to look at that. So now we've got a Q matrix 4x4. Four four. What I want here is a Q matrix. I want M underscore model, comma, uh, M underscore 
view m v and m underscore perspective okay so that's four of those have we set the position and color to anything <laughs> up it that's your claw that's my leg Okay, right at this point I'm splitting the screen. This is going to get nasty if I don't. Right, let's sort this all out. Q surface format. M format is done. Context is not set. We don't actually use it till there. Hmm. All right, shader. Yeah, that's okay. Then we should have position and color. That's the order that we've done things in. So M underscore position. Um, that's right. Set to zero. I know it gets set to zero anyway. Uh, naturally it should be minus one. It wants to cause an error. That's why I put it as an int. It is an int, yes. Good. M underscore color starts its life off as minus one. Otherwise, you're not going to get an error. And then that's important. M model starts its life off as M underscore model dot set to identity there it is comma then we need m underscore view is m underscore view dot set to identity Comma. This is very important to do this. If we don't, we're going to really mess up. I don't think it's going to let us do it, you know. Hmm. Okay. I don't think it's going to let us do that. It won't let us uh, call that function. So it would be... In C terms, uh, bracket zero. Scale it initialize. <laughs> Move definition to the header file. Basket. Well, I can't do it. It's asking us to do this in the header file. Hmm. I'm going to keep playing with this until I can f see if I can find a way. And the last one was M underscore perspective uh, becomes m underscore don't think it likes me doing it that way because m underscore perspective dot set to identity doesn't return anything does it all right so we'll have a look at that uh, i could just put it to null can i put it to null No. 
Yeah, I thought it was. I know, that's so stupid. We're going to have to null them out. I think it's the only way I can do it, because they are pointers. It's just like strings are pointers. Okay, put a comma. Okay, so that's those done. Uh, then we've got the vertex array. Ow! Oh. Get that claw out of me. Oh dear. We've got our test object, position buffer, and index buffer. Let's grow this some more. Because obviously we're going to need more buffers. Mm. Interesting. Let's we're gonna definitely need more buffers. So that's that. Uh, yep. Now I know that when this is constructed, automatically in the background, initialize GL is called, followed by resize GL, and then paint GL. So those three functions are actually called, called automatically. That's why without the updates at the bottom, it was zero. So it, it didn't show any FPS because it just went through them once and that was it. Done. Jobs are good and thank you very much. We'll just sit here and wait for you to close the program type of thing. So yeah, that was interesting. Hmm. That's why I put update in there to make it do more. Uh, right. So I've sorted the shader program. I've got the position and the color. We've got our matrices. Um, we've got a position buffer and an index buffer. Well, we're going to need a color buffer, aren't we now? Yeah. Where's our buffers? Right, I can't put a comma and then a debris. Well, I can, can't I? Uh, position, comma, uh, star. No, it's not going to let us. I don't think so, anyway. Star, m, underscore. Oh, it is. Uh, Colour. Buffer. We'll add that in. To here. Color buffer. We'll put it after position buffer. Here. There we go. Mm, thank you, Muppet. And it's new OpenGL buffer. OpenGL buffer, vertex buffer. Yeah, that's right. It's one of them. We only use two types. Well, at the moment, anyway. Um, just thinking whether I should check that or not. Hmm. I don't think I've even put anything in my notes about it, to be honest with you. Not really. Okay. Hmm. My mind is saying that should be a zero. Oh, it has a private constructor. So we don't actually need these. We only need... 
need these if we are oh, right. yeah we're just gonna get rid of them I don't like this null point going into them mm. That's our object, and these are our buffers, so we've got a colour buffer now, an index buffer. Have we got enough stuff yet? Uh, no, we haven't. I've missed one. <laughs> Comma. M underscore MVP model view perspective. Um, that can go in there. All, all, all of those three tied together. Hmm, I think I prefer that to that. I wonder if that'll come with an error. Don't care. All right. Next. Now we've got to do this properly. Our model we are going to make ourselves. The view is going to be the view from the camera, which we are going to completely ignore. <laughs> so that's easy. And the last one is going to be our perspective. Now, this is going to be interesting. Hmm. Have I got a destructor? I haven't ever. Right, we're going to have to put a destructor in. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, that's title. Ogle. <laughs> that is, that's just so bad. There you go. Ogle. That's the destructor. Overrides the destructor, but he's not marked override. I thought you'd get me on that one. It overrides the OpenGL widget one. All of them. Well, yeah. Yeah, that's correct. So I can just do that. Refactor, please. Because I've just noticed one, two, three, four. Yeah. Alright. What can we do? Alright, let's go in reverse, shall we? I always go backwards on these, so the last one last new there. Hmm. I mean, that one really could be a new. Not really. I believe it's an old pointer, doesn't matter. 
Right, here we go. Let's go to these. So, uh, M index buffer. Uh, how do we get rid of that? Uh, we destroy it. You're probably not used to this. You're probably used to delete. Well, in Qt, you actually have to look it up. So you have to look up in QOpenGL buffer how to get rid of them. It'll tell you. Uh, color buffer next. And again, destroy, please. Thank you. Uh, next one is position buffer. The reason I'm doing um doing this is otherwise I'm going to be leaving stuff everywhere in memory. Uh, destroy, please. Not just in memory, but on your graphics card as well. Yeah, think about that one. You don't really want all this lot lying around. Um, we also had a VAO. Have I not done it? We called it M test object. Okay. Um, that goes next. Um, test object. Uh, what do we do with that? That's again a buffer. So let's just destroy. Well, it's not a buffer, it's a handle. And finally, the last new that we've got there, it doesn't say new, but it's still a pointer, is M shader program. Uh, we just delete that. Oh, no. So that's our destructor sorted out. With this being a Q object, you can attach these to this and then they auto destroy. Or you could use Q pointer instead and get them to auto destroy. But mm, not bothered. I'll write it out. I don't mind doing it myself. Have we got all the bits and pieces we need now? think we have. Oh. Let's have a float. Uh, float. Rotation. Yeah, that'll do. No, M rotation. I think it's pretty obvious what I've got in mind for that variable. Uh, we'll set that to zero. Now, at this point, I think it's in degrees. Don't quote me. Um, so I'll just leave that as a note. It could be in radians. But we're going to find out as we go through this, aren't we? But I think it's in degrees. Should be. It's easy to check. So I'll do that. Uh, reset count. Don't need to change. Initialize. Oh dear, we are going to have to do some changes here, aren't we? Uh, initialize, yep. Yeah. Geo clear color, that's fine. That's fine. 
shader we've already changed over to a different shader but now we have m underscore color and that's going to equal m underscore shader program attrib location and that's just going to be color semicolon um, how do we do the other ones see uniform isn't it okay so mm. now I've messed up haven't I Position, color, and rotation. Okay. All right. I don't want that there. I want something else there. Copy. And you'll see why. I want to rename this one to something else. matrix I'll do mm. I only need to add that one and we need to be able to give an error on it Minus rotation isn't an error, so zero is fine. It'll go to minus 65,000 or something stupid if you let it. Don't let it, <laughs> is the answer to that one. Uh, so MVP we've now got, which is good. I've got it in, as an int now. So M underscore MVP equals m underscore shader program and this time I want uniform stuff uniform location and it's a uniform underscore mvp that's why I changed the variable name so it matches up all variable names now match up properly that's good alrighty uh, verts mm, I'll leave alone Index, I'll leave alone, but in between, we'll have some extra bits here. Um, it floats again, and this time it's going to be colours. And we're going to make that equal to something, aren't we? Semicolon tab. Now, what colour shall we have? If my hand will carry on working. I haven't got a drink. Oh, I have. Oh, I've got some fizzy stuff. Orange fizzy stuff. I can't open it. Let's try the black burpy bubbly liquid instead. I think that was a bit creepy actually, I shouldn't have done that. Mm. Oh, that's fresh and very bubbly. Mm -hmm. What colour should we have? Uh, RGB, so we'll have an R, a G, and a B. Okay. Uh, uh, 1.0F. Come on. 1.0F. 
this is white. And the last one is going to be one point naught anyway. And it's a comma. All right, so this will do everything white. All I want is zero, one, two, three. So one of these for each one of these. That's all I'm going to do. Copy and paste. So index zero, one, two, and three. Same as before. And to show that, I'll just do it here as well. Oh. One, two, and three. So that's your index variation. All I'm going to do is take out a few of these ones, put them to zeros. So the first one I'll, I'll put to red. The next one I'll put to green. Take out those two. And the last one I'll put to blue. There we go. So that's red, green, blue, uh, full colour, 100%. That stands for, if we want it to. Lovely. Colours, we've got them already. That's nice, but you may have already guessed, as we have, this seems to be like duplication of effort coming up here, which it is actually. Um, yeah, we've got vertex buffer objects. Um, so this is positions. Oh. Inverts, I suppose. Mm. We'll call it position. And now we can have color, which is exactly the same. <laughs> Um, sort of. <laughs> Let's have a look. Yeah, it's exactly the same. Except we are going to use um position uh, color buffer. There we go. Shader programs the same. Allocate and its colors. Site. Windows Defender. Oh, hasn't found anything. All oh, right. Okay. That's what it was doing. Colors. Okay. Uh, enable attribute array m underscore color. Okay, colors, 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 yeah, m color, color, and it's full. Just have to change it for one, two, three, four. Yeah, there's definitely four there uh, instead of the three there. 
Alrighty. Ah, now what's next? The index buffer say stays the same. Um, it's really roughly about it, isn't it? Okay. We can have M underscore color buffer release. Um, we've got the binds in the allocates and everything, that's okay. But we've got the releases. Yeah, you can see how it's starting just by going to basic from simplify. It's starting to grow. Now, there are some things here like, hold on a minute, blades. This vertex array object, it knows nothing about this UMVP thingy. If you've used your M color and your M position and your M shader program, those three. So we better separate that up because it's all we've used these three in here. As you can see, M color, M position, M shader program. So all of this is recorded. Hold on a minute. That's been in totally ignored. In fact, I don't know why it says it's being used. Hmm. There's nothing coming up anyway. Does it do highlights in here? Oh god, those highlights are bad. I can hardly see it. Can't see the highlights. Never mind. Have I used MVP anywhere? No, shouldn't have done. Right. So I'm going to ignore that for a second. And I'm going to come down and, and look at this mess here. Which says to do. Goodbye. Alright, so... Uh, hmm. I am thinking of putting it in here. Mm, that might be a bit daft. I'll do it in the draw. What am I going to put view to? Sorry, projection. That's what I'm thinking about. Projection blades. What are you doing about projection? Ooh. Um. Projection. Right. Um. Get off me notes, you. M. Underscore, and it's perspective. Uh, we want to. Set. Clear it, basically. Set to identity. Clear it to 1. That sets it to the value of 1. That's the easiest way of uh, putting it. It's a special matrix. It has a value of 1. So if you multiply by it, it does nothing. And if you divide by it, it does nothing. So it's effectively 1. Um, Just thinking. 
All right, I'll put W instead here. I don't really care about that too much. W equals um, a static cast of float. So that becomes float. That becomes a float. What goes in the brackets? Width. I'm just converting it. And h equals, I'm just wondering whether I want to store these or not, and I don't think I really do at this point. Uh, static cast uh, float. And that will be h e i g a d. There we go. Uh, next up will be float uh, aspect. This is not the best way of doing this, by the way. Aspect ratio. There is a fantastically better way of doing this. I think you do it in one line, really. And it's going to be a width over h semicolon. Okay, and then M perspective, and it's perspective, I think, on these. Yeah, float vertical angle. Vertical angle of what? Vertical angle in degrees? Oh, but it's 65 degrees. I don't know. Um, float aspect ratio. Oh, I've got a word for that. Aspect ratio. Next is near plane. Where do you want me to start drawing? As close to me as possible. 10 centimeters away from the lens is 0.1 f. If 1 is 1 meter, 0.1 is 10 centimeters. Uh, how far away do you want to go? I don't really want to go that far. About 50 will do. 50 meters? No, I'll do 20. Could even do ten, couldn't I? Yeah, as close as possible. Really, uh, that's the furthest distance. Anything beyond ten meters will not show. It's a simplified version of that, and that's all you have to do. Ariti. This is where the paint gel gets messed up. Um, yeah, I, yeah, 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 mm. mm. okay, I'll do it, I'll do it that way. So we've already got MV. So it's clear color is the start of the OpenGL stuff. Remember, it's literally the same. It's still the same six elements being drawn, uh, but we just have a lot more data. Um, messing around in there, so I'm not going to mess up your, my counter. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark this as the OpenGL section. 
actually know or think about it. That's one section. Two. That's clean up. Clean up. Uh, this is actually open GL draw, but I need some calculations. So we need M underscore. Hmm. I disagree with putting this here. I think we should do it in here. This is the initializer, isn't it? Yeah, it is. So it should initialize our variables as well. Which it's doing here. Alright, I'm going to put this section here. In it matrices. There we go. So we have M underscore model. And we have to set it to identity. Every single one has to be set to M V view. Dot set to identity. Um, those are the only two we need there. And M underscore full matrix set to identity. When do we calculate that? Okay. I've got M rotation, haven't I? Yeah. So let's just put a test example in, as I usually do. Then open GL. Okay. This this is um, init shader variables. Uh, 
なたってが。Um, what about s we got down here? This is the data section. Init data form a model. It's looking good. It's actually starting to look like a real program now. And then we've got the vertex buffer. Yeah, color. Yeah, everything's clear what it is. Yes. I need to do a calculation. So we're going to see nothing as far as I can tell at the moment.、Uh, position our model. That's what we haven't done. So that will come with the matrix stuff. Really, we should keep things together. So, if we've got initialized matrices here, we should also initialize、uh, model position. Hmm. Okay. Still on the matrices, though, so it's just、uh, starting、uh, model position. Which will be a model, I guess. M underscore model、uh, dots translate.、Oh. I can just do an X, Y, and Z. All right, I'll just do that then. Um, X across none. Uh, y up and down. Hmm. I'll push it upwards by half a meter. It's only a half a meter square. And backwards into the distance. I will shove it out to about、mm, three meters, three meters away. That's it. So that's the starting model position. Rotation, don't care. Right. So let's see if we can do this drawing a bit better now. That's right. All right, we have to start. This, it's this MVP thing. That we now have to uh, address. Um, so, uniform variables. So, we're going to have normal variables we've already done. Well, like data has already been done. What hasn't been done is the rest of this, which is why I'm putting all this stuff in here.、Um, what I would do with That. <laughs> 
is I would init draw. What do I normally call this? It's not initialized. Prepare. Because it isn't an initialization. I've already got all of the initialization done. Prepare. Draw. And what is it? I what we're doing here is we're preparing all the bits and pieces for the draw itself. So that goes first. Um, that goes second. Strangely enough. Do I need these bound at the time? Yes, I do. I need that shader program bound. Test object bound. Yes. Yes, this is correct now. Now we can work out the full matrix. Well, we could have worked it out before. In fact, it's probably the first thing we should do. So, M underscore full matrix equals M under uh, perspective. I wonder why, mm, doesn't matter, perspective uh, times M underscore view, which we haven't done anything with. That's the camera. Well, yes, it's a camera, I suppose. Um, we've done nothing with it. We're just gonna put, let the, it's just gone to default and m underscore model which we placed into the world and set already with a translate a translation a translate a translation right so that's that so space clear this up a bit this line has to go here which is m underscore shader program and it's set uniform value and what do you need its location, which is M underscore MVP. We know that. And a GL float value. Interesting. Oh, it's got 54 overloads. Oh, right then. Yeah. M underscore uh, full matrix. Yeah, 4 by 4 matrix it'll take. Good. Yep. Yeah. It's happy. I'm happy. So that does that. So then we can go into the draw. Which is that. And then it's clean up. Hmm. Okay, so that's the draw and then the clean up. I don't think I have to do anything else. Not really. Objects and program release. And I'm just throwing in an update. This is going to hammer my computer putting that in there. Normally what I would do is... Um, I would have three here. Uh, one of them being perspective. <laughs> M perspective, M view and M model. And I would do the multiplication in here. So I'd have uniform MVP 
and it would be P times V times M times position. It has to go backwards. Matrix multiplication is backwards. Don't ask. It just is. Deal with it. <laughs> oh dear. I love matrices. Right. Am I happy with all of this? It looks good because there's not very much green. Which means there's more data. God, that's, that's a heck of a program I've written. Okay. I'm alright up to there. What have we got here? Uh, we've got uh, prepare. Oh, do it properly. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, prepare. Um, prepare variables. There's a reason I'm doing all of this, it's because I'm going to be using this as um, the model piece for the final. Uh, yeah. And here we uh, set I wonder if it matters about the viewport. I doubt it because we're using a widget, aren't we? And we're not using multiple screens or anything. And we're not trying to um like play a video on a on a wall in a 3D room, which we're going to do in the future. Uh set the Perspective matrix. One, two, three, four, five. There we go, and that's that one done. Fantastic. Loving it. One, two, three, four, five. Queue up the next draw call. Because that's what it does. It doesn't call this function. What it does is it says, Hey, Mr... A Q application. Um, just to notify you, put in the Q to take action when possible. Paint GL, and that's why. Well, that's exactly what it does. Remember, you might be resizing the window at the time, or doing something like that. So it's in the re resizing function, and if you're resizing the the window, often you'll find that um, graphics stop. And that's because of this. Because of the way this works. Now we haven't got any motion now at the moment. Let's see if we get... Let's just see if we can get this built. Hmm. Well, it's not showing anything. Oh. 
Oh, something's wrong. Something's very wrong. Hmm. Something's not quite right. Uh, we are on OpenGL 3.3 core profile, Mesa 19.2.6. Now, if you can't see the objects that you are drawing, it sometimes means you are drawing it the wrong way around. But we know we're not because we've tested it. Hmm. Now, what could I have done wrong? All right, I've got that in. Okay, that looks right. The draw call looks right. Followed by releases, yeah. Counter, not bothered about it. We know it's going through here because the counter's working. So it is calling that. And it's not causing an error. Create shader, shaders, basic color. Yep, shaders, create shader, yeah. Uh, basic color, which is one. Okay, just pop it there. Yeah, lady. There we go. Basic color one. Crimes, you can't see much, can you, on this? Oh, that's because I've messed the screens up, haven't I? Um. Display open gel. L program. Ah, right, got you. Ah, here we go. All right, step over that. Step into no, step out no, step over. Thank you. Found you. Uh, create parent zero. And we are getting an address with one items. So it's created. Children one. Children two. That's just the tree. Yeah, that's a stack. That's the threads. this giving shader name 
basic colour. Yeah, so that's working. Link bind return. Do we unbind and release? That seems alright. Very hard to tell with shaders. Uh, we link it, bind it, return. Okay. Return. Shader program. How do I find out my variables? M shader program equals OX Q open GL shader program. Okay. Fine. But how do I find out more about this? Uh, I don't need it. Mm. Disem disassembled. No, thank you. I wouldn't mind doing that. Right, that's where we are now. Hmm. Ah, here we go. So, M underscore colour belongs to this, doesn't it? Yeah, M underscore position. Why is the values? Ah, here we go. Uh, shader program, please. PQ shader program. Damn it. It's too much information. Hmm. know what I've done. It's alright. Fixed. Oh dear. What's this? I don't know. Right. OpenGL. Uh, where's my dupery thingy? Here we go. OpenGL. How it works. Quick 101. I should have done this before I was trying to run it. Although, because then I'd remember. Hello Muppet, you want me to stop? Well I can't because I want to finish this in about five minutes and I, it's not going to happen. <laughs> come on, I hope if you want to come, if you want a cuddle, come and get a cuddle. Uh, let's have a look. Quick 101. Okay, you have a TV screen. Um, let's draw a TV screen. It goes something like... Mm, mm, Okay. Into the TV screen. Is the Z direction. But it isn't. It's negative Z. The closer something is to you when you don't have a when on the default camera, the closer something is to you, the closer it is and bigger on the screen, the lower its Z value. Sorry, the, the higher its Z value. The lower its Z value will put it further away. So your T V actually goes Muppet, please don't. It's okay. So here... This is going to really scare people off, I think, about OpenGL. That's zero. 
so your Z axis is there going into the distance. Zero is the dead center of your screen. This is plus one Y. That is minus one Y. This is uh, plus one X minus one X. Can you see what I've done wrong yet? I've taken our flat 2D object and I've placed it into a 3D world. Where have I placed it? Up here. Please down. So let's have a look where I've placed it, shall we? I have placed it three meters through my head. I think I meant a minus sign there. Three meters away from me into the TV set might do better. So let's try that instead. There we go, there it is. Isn't it pretty? That's three meters away inside the TV set and what? It's square? Now, I can't trust these readings today, but they're looking about right, because I've added a calculation. The reason I wanted to show this is it's now going wonky. 1,800, 1,000, 1,200, 1,100. 1100, 1100, settling down. So it's about the same. I would have thought, because there's no graphics card here, as soon as it hits that calculation, it's going to slow down. It has done. Alright, let's give it an extra calculation to do. The little sod's not going to get away with that. I'm not talking to you, Muppet, sorry. Um no, that's that's okay. Let's let's draw it bigger. Let's make it work harder. Um where can we put it? We can bring it bring it towards us by a meter. But you can see by putting it point five, this is why I put it point five up. Uh to prove that zero was the middle. Because if you remember, that is minus point five. Is it? Yeah, minus 0.5. That bottom corner is at minus 0.5. Zero's in the middle. Okay, so you've got 5.5. Five. Doesn't matter about that. X, Y, Z. Hmm, maybe it does. Maybe I should put that to zero. Yes, I should. We now have, pl we now have a, a variable to do it for us. Uh, uh, I don't have to put it in front of us anymore. I was using the automatic cameras. There we go. Um, so, have I got it running? Uh, application output. Still running somewhere. Okay, where are you? Yep, so everything's working beautifully there. Wow. So yeah, if you can't see your model the first time you run the program, check where you've put it. A lot of the time, it's just that minus sign that's been missed. Um, people don't realise that into the screen is negative Z on um, a default camera, which is at zero, 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 looking into the screen down the minus Z axis. So the camera is reversed. Mm, good idea there. Um, right, so if I put it to zero, 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 I wanted to show you this point 0.5 thingy. 
Yeah, that's better. That's that's now the right distance. Good. I can see it properly. And it's still... I think this is more my machine. Let's put it at 2. I have to be careful because I don't want to mess up my head calculations. Okay. Build. Clean all. Okay, do a clean build and run. There we go, lovely. So now it's ev it's it's properly evident now that it's off center. Okay. So all I did was I put it 0.5 up, so it's actually resting on the zero plane. Zero x. So that's minus one, plus one x. Up the center of that is the y. And 0.5 divided by 2, because it's 2 meters away, is the distance along that edge across there to there. So that is actually uh, 0.5 across. So you took two of these and put them 1, 2. It would cover, believe it or not, that top portion there, quarter. My calculations are correct. But you can see that it's no longer a rectangle, and that's the main thing. How was that accomplished? That was accomplished by measuring across the top how many pixels there are, and measuring down by how many pixels there are. And then just dividing the width by the height to get an aspect ratio. Uh, most TVs are 9 by 5 so if I was to put in 9 by 5 but I haven't got that mode in you can preset these so you don't have to keep doing this damn calculation um, I wonder what's going to happen if I do this nothing oh thank god for that I thought it might react to it but I haven't asked it to good it's here, perspective uh, dot perspective. Um, oh, I've just done that again. I want to keep that. I want to actually keep it visible. So I'm going to put it down here. The application output doesn't matter to me. Perspective. Uh, press F1. Right. Multiplies a matrix by another that applies a perspective projection. The vertical field of view will be a vertical angle degrees. Oh, it is a degrees. Within a window um, with a given aspect ratio that determines the horizontal field of view, the projection will have the specified near plane and far plane clipping planes, which are the distances from the viewer to the corresponding planes. It's called a frustrum. Multiplies the matrix by another that applies exactly the same thing. Projection for a window with lower left corner, left blah 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 clipping planes. So you can use the frustrum if you wish to. These things, these words are good to look upon Google. In fact, there's a proper picture on there, if I'm right. 417, it's doing rather well, don't you think? For something that's supposed to be displaying at 60. Uh, Frustrum. That's the word I was trying to get to. Uh, is the portion of a solid that lies between one or two parallel planes. So the top and the bottom of that one that you're looking about. Um, do we have any pictures? No. Learn about bangs. Really? Really? They need their head examining. I uh, don't really want a definition. It's 
the point between the near plane and the far plane is called a frustrum and on in our space here let's have a look at our space here and I'll see if I can get this to work nicely with that yeah we can there we go um, what does our frustrum look like it's, it's 3D for starters so I'll have to draw something 3D our frustrum looks what are you doing with your pen our frustrum looks something like uh, our screen alright so we've got our screen we then have going out from our screen at uh, 65 degrees between those two That's our 10 meters. And you can't really see that bottom one now because I've messed it up slightly. Something like that. And you're viewing out to this plane at the back. So that plane at the back gets squeezed up so it was like that okay so that's your near plane your far plane and your angle of what do we give 65 degrees and we've got our square quite happily floating around in there somewhere and when this gets to the last part that matrix squishes it up to that which goes from minus one to plus one and your eye is here looking that way through the screen from minus one to plus one or is it plus one to minus one Damn it, got myself there, don't know which way around it is. That's the plus, that's the minus, okay. It doesn't change, I don't think it changes the sign this. It can, I suppose, if it wants to. But that's what the perspective matrix does. It takes the dimensions here and squishes it flat and the whole thing becomes this little box from plus one to minus one and your visual here which was at three out of ten will probably end up my square is here give it an eyeball there we go nearly an eyeball give me some eyelashes uh, maybe a nose and don't know and it looks like uh, Mr. Cockerel is here to watch so I'll put some fluffy bits on the top of his head there we go and he's a happy cockerel what do you think he's now looking at my square anyway um <laughs> This is me trying to draw 3D into 2D. And that's exactly what that matrix does. It takes a 3D frustrum between that plane, so that's near plane, and the far plane. And it scrunches them to the two things up into a little box like this. And that will push, because that's so much larger, that pushes everything forwards and that's your depth buffer
that's where your depth buffer and your depth test is done to see what is in front of what so if I put a second square up I might have it in front or behind it and there may be an overlap so part of it won't be seen quite interesting but yeah so if I was to put a second one in say somewhere here then part of it will be covered up by this one and you see a little square poking out behind it in whatever colours I decide to give it but hey ho uh, don't close thank you and that's only taken us 15 minutes over and we are running at uh, according to this about 700 800 I'd say it's probably about 800 but I think there's something wrong with the computer and what it's downloading I think there's a download gone on so I think that's messed everything up today I'll do a clean clean look at this uh, in a second well later on tonight and see what they are but I think I can get this I mean it was it was already at what 11,000 wasn't it so really uh, do we have one here? Don't think so. Mm, don't look in there, it's easy to look on here. Uh, office. No, I've got nothing. What do we usually use for office? Oh, I'll think of something. Something with a spreadsheet. Make a spreadsheet of these, these numbers. That might be a good idea. Uh, so yeah, it's working nicely now, that. Uh, full 3D. Oh god, I didn't get it moving, did I? Went through all of that and didn't get it moving. Silly me. Um, hmm. Where are we doing the calculations? Oh god. It all depends on this. We do our thingy there. So it has to come before that. Um, we can just rotate it, can't we? Yeah. M underscore rotate. Let's give it a fictional amount of degrees. I think it's in degrees. Uh, no idea. Plus equals 0 0.1. F. It's a floating number, isn't it? Undeclared. All right. What was it then? M underscore rotation plus equals naught point one degree per draw call. Remember we're doing thousands of these, so that's gonna be a thousand degrees degrees per second. <laughs> I think it's going to go silly. But we're about to find out. Um M underscore model uh, dot rotate. What do we have to do? Uh, void rotate float angle. So float angle will be M rotation. And what does it want next? It wants to know which way is up. And it wants it as a Q vector 3D. I can do an XYZ. Or a quaternion. I think XYZ is easier. Um what shall we rotate it around? The Z axis. 
uh, why not? Well, looking into the screen, so if you rotate it about the Z axis, it should spin around like a, a top, a spinning top from above. Yes, that's what it would look like. Honest. Well, you never know, do you? Until you do it. Uh, comma. I've m I hope I've made 3D programming look damned simple. I mean, if I can do it, model my way through it. There you go. Z direction. Straight into the screen. Rotate about that, mister. Um only thing I don't like about that is that if m underscore rotation is greater than or equal to 360.0f then m underscore rotation minus Minus equals three six zero point zero f. So just minus the three hundred and sixty degrees off it, because that's a full circle. I hope. I hope this is in degrees. Okay. You can spin it while sign. Wow. going that fast that it's going over itself. One, two, three, four, five. I'm allowed another zero. There we go. That's calmed it down. Right. That's how fast it's going. Does it just keep speeding up or what? It'll alter its speed with the speed below. Wow. I don't know why it's stuttering like that. Oh yes I do, I remember why. Because we haven't given it a sleep timer. Damn it. You have to stop the processing at no point does the processor get to rest uh, which means it's getting information too fast uh, we never stop sh throwing data at it basically all the processors uh, it's probably taking up every single bit of this virtual machine just to just to try and get a square to go around. I've just realised what I've done. Uh, but yeah, that's funny as heck. Uh, just take one zero off. But yeah, I mean, it's ridiculous unless you control this somehow. Yeah, right. I think I preferred it as point, point 0.1. That was funnier. That was too funny. Because I, I don't know if this is in radians or not. It could be. If it is, that's probably why it's going absolutely nuts at me. I like that one. I like that version better. That's the version I want. Hmm, <laughs> <laughs> that's so silly. But yeah, that's the kind of thing you can get by asking it to do something stupid. Uh, can you tell that? If you're doing this, you'll probably get a lot smoother answer if you're doing it on a computer rather than a virtual machine. So I think we can 
start some music now. I am actually quite happy with that. So yeah. Tomorrow, what are we doing? It's Saturday, isn't it? Oh, it's Blades vs. Aliens. I'm going to get everybody shot. Oh, no. We've got that special mission to do, and one of our watchers or viewers has uh, kindly said he'll take the character and the full responsibility for the, the, the complete disaster that will happen. So, thank you to Mordlach. Uh, the whiskey drink. Mm, lovely. Oh, now we've got problems with the stream. <laughs> Get off. Stop it, Muppet. What are you doing? Right, I'm closing the stream down because Muppet's now... Uh, now going absolutely mental at me. But I'm, I'm surprised I've been able to do so much on the virtual machine in OpenGL and get the kind of speeds that I've gone with the OpenGL. Uh, for all of you who have watched me through this OpenGL adventure with QT, thank you. Next week we're going to sort it all out. We're going to start putting programs into libraries and creating libraries. Now that's a good idea, because then we've got standard libraries that we can use, that we've created alongside Qt, and we can then make better programs, if you get my trick. Take care peeps, and have fun. <laughs>